Yes, sir, this is Sunday, the 17th of July. And um, I thank the Lord for bringing me through another day. And I thank him for blessing me to be able to bring forth and teach his word about his son and uh, what is going down and why it's going down. So hopefully I'll be able to get through a lot of topics, right? So this one is the inner court. In the Bible, there's an in interior and an exterior, okay? So the Lord is about cleaning the interior. So the interior, you gotta know about yourself, okay? You gotta know about yourself and, you know, the things that go wrong with you and so forth like that. So hopefully, you'll be able to do this, right? Hopefully, Lord, will bless you that you'll be able to do this. This is uh, Ephesians, the first chapter, and uh, that one started 16 verse. He says, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, okay? That the Lord of our Father, the Savior of Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Okay, that's what you need, man. You need, you need the wisdom and the knowledge and revelation and knowledge that your eyes of your understanding being enlightened. See, that's what the game is all about, is that your eyes be enlightened, okay? that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory in the saints of his inheritance in the saints. Okay, so that's the whole game. The whole game is for you to know what is going down, uh, your part in it, and how you can help yourself. All right, so we did it with the inner court. Now remember, there's an inner court and an outer court. Each person has an inner court and an outer court. But what is the inner court comprised of? Let's see what the Savior says in Mark. Let's see what the Savior says in Mark about your inner court. Let's go to Mark. The, we're going to find out the nature of man. The nature of man. Mark, the seventh chapter. And we're going to start at the 19th verse. I'm going to start at 16, 17. And when he entered into the house after the, from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto them, are you so without understanding? See, everything is about getting understanding. Proverbs 4, verse 7. Do you not perceive that that whatsoever thing that from without entered into a man, it cannot defile him, because it entered not into his heart, but into the belly and goeth out into the dwarf, purging all meats. So that's talking about your physical system. Okay, like water goes in into your liquid system. And he said, that which coming out of a man, that defiled a man. Where's what's coming out? From here. That's what's going to defile you. And from within, out of the heart of man proceeded evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things coming from within and defile a man. See that? So that's part of your nature. That's the negative nature. So how do you, how do you clean that? Let's go into the book of Ephesians. How do you start to wash that? How do you start to wash that? Let's go in the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter. And the 26th verse. Ephesians, the fifth chapter, and the 26th verse. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. So it's not that you jump in the shower, that that's what's going to clean you. No. You have to, for you to clean out all these impure thoughts and knowing your nature. Okay, Proverbs 4, verse 7. Get wisdom with all that getting get understanding so that he might sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of the water by the word so you got to read the word for you to clean let's go in the book of Romans let's go in the book of Romans Romans the 10th chapter 
How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? So this got to be told to you. How then shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who have received our report? So faith cometh then by hearing, and hearing by the word of the Lord. See that? So you got to get the word of the Lord. Now who's the word of the Lord going to come through? Let's go into the book of Jeremiah. Let's go into the book of Jeremiah, the third chapter. Okay? Jeremiah, the third chapter. And the 15th verse. I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. What knowledge and understanding? The word of the Savior. Let's go in the book of John, the Gospel of John. John 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, that the Savior speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So what are you seeking for? Life. How are you going to get that? The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So you got to read of him. Now, let's stay in the book of John. John 7, verse 38. He that believed on me, as the scripture have said, see that? Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So you got to read that gospel. You got to believe in that gospel. You got to believe in that gospel, man. He that believed on me, as the scripture has said. So you can't go around. You can't go around. You can't go around. Let's stay in the gospel. Gospel of John. The fifth chapter and the 39th verse. What did he say? He said, search the scriptures. So you got to study. He said, search the scriptures. For in them, you think you have eternal life. But now, as you gain knowledge of self, as you gain knowledge of self, now you begin to understand that there is an inner man that you're dealing with. You're dealing with an inner man. And you got to clean that inner man. You got to wash him. You got to clean him. Okay. And Paul spoke of that. But let's check out the nature of, of man. Okay. Let's go in the book of Ecclesiastes. The first chapter in, in, in the Bible. Ecclesiastes, the first chapter. So you want to see yourself. You want to see your nature. What is natural to you. Let's see what the book says. Now, there are many different verses. Ecclesiastes, the first chapter. And the 13th verse. He says, and I gave my heart, 12 verse. I, the preacher, which is uh, Solomon, was king over Israel and Jerusalem. And I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This sore travail, see, it's a sore what? Travail have the Lord given to the sons of man to be exercised their way. It's, it's, it's a trial. That's why man does that. He says, I've seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. You see, so the nature is, you're wasting your time. All is vanity. And vexation of spirit. That's why people tap out by taking drugs, alcohol, all kinds of things that they don't worry about these things no more. As some people begin to understand that. All is vanity. But he gave it to you for you to trouble yourself with. That's the nature of what is natural to you. Okay? Let's stay up in the book. Let's go to Ecclesiastes, the second chapter. Let's drop down to 17 verse in the first chapter. And I gave my hand to my heart, as hard as is mine, to know wisdom and to know madness and folly 
and I perceive this also is vexation of spirit. So he gave his mind to know positive and negative. Then he comes back and he says, for in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increases knowledge increases sorrow, because now you know too much, and you see it doesn't really help you in your position. So Solomon now was so great in his knowledge that he knew positive and negative. And I perceive that this also is vexation of spirit. Because he's like, well, what does it matter? Man, I know all this stuff. What does it matter? How does it help me in my situation? Okay, let's go to Ecclesiastes. He's the same book, second chapter. I'm going to start at first verse. He says, I said in my heart, go to now, that I may prove thee with mirth. Therefore, enjoy pleasure, and behold, this also is vanity. So now, you see that this too is vain. All you're dealing with is pleasure. You see that this also is vain. Second chapter, 23rd verse. So, what is the nature of man? For all his days are sorrows, and his travail grief. Yea, his heart taking not rest in the night. This also is vanity. See that? That's the nature of man. All his days are sorrows, man. He says, There is nothing better for a man that he should eat and drink, and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw that it was from the hand of the Lord. Let's drop down to 26 verse. Nature. For the Lord give it to a man that is good in his sight, wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner he give it travail, to gather and to heap up, that he might give to him that is good before the Lord. This also is vanity. So Solomon is like, yo, this is crazy stuff, man. He gonna give to the, to, 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 to the sinner, what is he gonna give to the sinner? But to the sinner he give it to rail, to gather and heap up, that he might give to him that is good before the Lord. See that? Let's get the third chapter, 11 verse. He had made, now look at the nature. He had made everything beautiful in his time. See that? Every place in time, and see every country was beautiful in its time, the way the Lord set it up. Also, he said the world in their heart. Let's start at 10 verse. I have seen the travail which the Lord has given to the sons of men to be exercised therein. So something was given to us. Something was given to us. And he had made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world. See, men don't die to go to heaven. Why? Because he has set the world in their heart. Men fight for kingdoms on the world so that no man can find out the works that the Lord make it from the beginning of time. See, everything was set for here and now. Okay? Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11. Let's go to 18 verse. And I moreover I saw under the sun the place of judgment that wickedness was there and the place of righteousness that iniquity was there because that's a balance. That's a balance. Okay, so wherever there's positive, there's going to be negative. And wherever there's negative, there's going to be positive. And I said in my heart concerning their states of the sons of men that the Lord might manifest them that they see that they are beasts. What did the Lord call us? Beasts. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them, as one died, so died the other. Yea, they all have one breath, so that a man have no preeminence over a beast, for all is vanity. So we're not no greater than them. We all die. All go to one place, all of the dust, and all turn to dust again. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth downward, that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? 
See that? So what is he really talking about? What is he really talking about? So you can see the board. So you can understand what it is that he's really talking about. So if this is the earth, okay, when animals die, so if this is the earth, He said they don't go up. He said that the animal spirits go downward. But what spirits go up? Men spirits go up. to same Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter and the 7th verse. And then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto the Father who gave it. See that? So he's clearing it up for you that when men die, they go upward. Men, women, children. They go upward, back to the Father. Now, when animals die, they go downward. See that? And they continue to cycle. So lions, when, they, when their cubs is born, birds and so forth like that. That's what happens. So he just broke down there a ever-renewing cycle. He just broke down an ever-renewing cycle. Okay? He just broke down an ever-renewing cycle that the Lord has set up. Who knows the spirit of the man that goes upward? All right? So when men die, animals don't have to be judged. That's what he's letting you know there. Okay, let's further move on. Let's go to Ecclesiastes, the sixth and seventh verse. Um, sixth chapter and the seventh verse. It says, 
For all the labor of man is for his mouth, yet the appetite is not filled. See, so there's things that we can't see, so we strain and we're greedy. See, that's, that's your nature. You're greedy. You want more. You want to know more. You want more money. You, you want more this. You want more that. All the labor of man is for his mouth. Everything is going in here. Yet, yet the appetite is not filled. Let's go 7 verse 20. For there is not a just man upon earth that do it good and sin it not. See that? So everybody think that they so righteous and they don't commit sin and all these different things. Look what he says. All men sin. All men sin. So when these guys is telling you about they perfect, you're a liar. When men is telling you that they do not sin, that they keep the law, when you keep the law, that means you're not supposed to break the law. So what did Solomon say? He said, for there is not a just man upon earth that do it good and sin it not. So people run around, oh, I'm saved, I do this and that. No, you're not. So I never tell anybody that I don't sin. That's a lie. Also take no heed unto all words that are spoken, lest thou hear that thy servant curse thee. For oftentimes also thy own heart know it, that thou likewise hast cursed others. All this have I proved by wisdom, and I said, I will be wise, but it is far from me. So you know you do, what he's saying is, the things that you don't like somebody to do or say against you, remember you did it once in the past. Look how he's breaking it down for you. That's what he's saying. Take no heed also unto all words that are spoken. Let it go. Lest thy servant curse thee, lest you hear your servant curse you. For oftentimes thou in thine heart knowest that thou likewise thyself. So the same things you beefing about, you have done. You have done. Okay? You have done. Let's move on. 729. He says, which yet I'm going to start at seven, verse twenty five. He says. Now watch this and listen to this well. I applied my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know wickedness of folly and even of foolishness and madness. That's how deep Solomon was. So he was going into psychiatry and philosophy of the mind. Okay? He says, and I find more bitter more bitter than death, the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands is bands, and whosoever pleaseth the Lord shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. So he let you know, since that's what you like, you end up with these wicked women, man. And he says he's found no worse than that. And that's the nature of people, men and women. Behold, this I have found, saith the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account. Which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not. He said he couldn't find them. He couldn't find one. One man among a thousand have I found. But a woman among all those have I not found. That's a very steep balance. In a thousand men, he's found one that was good. Yet in a thousand women, he found not one. Lo, this only have I found that the Lord made man upright, 
but they sought out many inventions. See that? They want to know this. See, that's your nature. You want to, instead of you being humble and thanking the Lord for what you got, you want to find out this, you want to find out that. Let's go into Apocrypha. Let's go into Apocrypha. Let's go in Wisdom of Solomon. The third chapter in the 18th verse. The greater thou art, the more humble thyself and thou shalt, the more humble thyself and thou shalt find favor before the Lord. Many are in high places and of renown, and mysteries are revealed unto the meek. For the power of the Lord is great, and he's honored of the lowly. So he's letting you know what nature you should have. Seek not out thou things that are too hard for thee, neither search the things that are above your strength. But that which is commanded thee, think thereon with reverence, for it is not needful for thee to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. You don't have to know everything. Be not curious in unnecessary matters, for more things are shown unto thee than men understand. For many are deceived by their own opinion. So the Lord is letting you know, stay within yourself, man. Stay within yourself. Okay, let's move on. Let's, let's look at the nature of a man. The eighth chapter, the first verse, Ecclesiastes, in the Bible. Who is as a wise man and knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom. See that? A man's wisdom. That's what you're supposed to be looking for. Making his face to shine. So you stand strong in that. And the boldness of his face shall be changed. So that's what you're looking for. You're looking for wisdom. All right? Let's go same chapter. You want to live in wisdom. You got to put it on like a crown, like a diadem. Let's, let's look at that, that you got to put it on. Let's go in the book of Job. Job 29, verse 14 and 15. I put on righteousness. See that? You had to put on righteousness like a garment. And it clothed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. A diadem is a crown. So you got to move righteously in the scriptures. That's the nature. So there's a left nature and a right nature. There is a left nature and a right nature. So a diadem is a crown. I was eyes to the blind and feet I was to the lame. So you were helping people. You were giving them the proper knowledge that Christ gave to you. Okay? I was a father to the poor and the cause which I knew not, I searched out. So that is your job that you're supposed to do. So when you're putting on your crown, not because you're boasting of yourself, of your money and so forth. Look what he says. Who is as a wise man? And who knows the interpretation of a thing? A man's face, a man's wisdom, making his face to shine. And the boldness of his face shall be changed. How? I put on righteousness. So when you are in the movement of the scriptures now, you put on righteousness. And it clothed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. A diadem is a crown. Okay? So when you're doing right, you helping the poor. I was eyes to the blind and feet I was to the lame. Do you help those? Do you help those or you just walk by them? I was a father to the poor. Do you give? And the cause which I knew not, I searched out. Boom. That's the nature of man. That's the nature of man. And it goes very deep. These are shorts. Okay. We're still in the eighth chapter, Ecclesiastes. Let's go to six verse. He says, because to everything, every purpose, there is a time of judgment. Therefore, the misery of man is great upon him. See the nature? Man is miserable. Man is miserable. They don't know which way is right, which way is wrong. That's their understanding. Man is miserable. To everything, there is a purpose and a time of judgment. Boom. 
Let's move on. Seven verse. For he knoweth not that which shall be. For who can tell him when it shall be? Listen to this verse well. He says, there is no man that have power over the spirit. What is the spirit? The spirit is the energy that makes me do this. The spirit is the energy that makes my eyes move up and down, that makes me talk. The spirit is the energy that makes my heart keep pumping blood. Okay, that's the fire force. Over the spirit, to retain the spirit, neither have he power in the day of death. See that? So when you die, no man is a God to bring that spirit back into the body. See, in Ecclesiastes is giving you answers. So a lot of people say that they're gods and so forth like that. Okay? That's eight. Um, now we're going into the nature again. Ecclesiastes 8, chapter 11, verse. Got a couple more. It says, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Bang! A lot of people don't understand the Bible. So they see things that's going on all over the world and there's no judgment coming against it, all the wickedness. See, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully setting them to do evil. So you see evil going down all over the world, all around you, in your neighborhood. You're like, man, and then people are always crying. Well, God, when is God going to do this and when is God going to do it? God ain't moving when you want. God not moving when you want or how you want or because, because you think you're right. God's not moving that way. He says, look at it again. Because a sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, so your, your nature is you want vengeance. I want, I want vengeance. Therefore, in your heart, the sons of men is fully setting them to do evil. This is your nature. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, so you see people getting away with it. You see people getting away with it. Look at Pablo Escobar. Look at all the cartel drug dealers and they're making billions of dollars. Look at all the drug dealers all over the world. Just using them for an example. And they're making billions of dollars. Look at what America is doing. Wait. Look at who, what America is doing. Bang. A century of U.S. military interventions all over the world. Listen to the verse well. Because a sentence against an evil work, this is their evil work, is not executed speedily, therefore they continue to do what they do. See that? Wars that they have destroyed people all over the world countries all over the world. This is Lucifer in Roman in, in Isaiah the 14th chapter and the 12th verse that people are always talking about Lucifer and don't know what the hell they're talking about. This is Lucifer. Light bearer. He has light to destroy people all over the world. Bang. So no sentence is coming against them. No sentence is coming against this place. Nothing. So you're like, man, it must be no God. A lot of people say that. So they just abandon and give up. They just abandon and give up. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, so this country is evil. This country has destroyed millions of people all over the world. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it will be well with them that fear the Lord which fear before him, but it shall not be well with the wicked, man. You think the Lord don't know what's going down? You think the Lord don't know? You think the Lord is sleeping? You think the Lord is sleeping, man? You think he took a vacation? Yeah, I'm going to Disney World. Is that what you really think? But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not the Lord. They don't fear the Lord. 
USA. In God we trust. What God? Not the God of the Bible. But now, all kingdoms have an expiration date. All kingdoms. Somebody's always coming to take somebody down until the righteous kingdom come. We got a couple more, and I'm going to show you that in Job, that they have an expiration date. Let's go in the book of Job. Everything is in the scriptures. You just got to know where to go get it. That's why you have to study to show thyself approved. Let's go to the book of Job, the 14th chapter, and see what he says. The nature of man. Man that is born of woman is a few days. What does it mean a few days? You can't go past 100 years. If, if, if a man goes past 100 years, he's an anomaly. He's an anomaly. Most men is somewhere between 60 to 80 or under. You make 85, 90 like my uncles and them, 87, my uncle just died, he died 87. Man, you was blessed. But the Lord has cut man's time down. See that? He's cut man's time down. That's why he said, I will no longer fight with man. I will cut your time down. He says, man that is born of a woman is a few days. See, that's our nature. And it's full of trouble. What is our nature? We in trouble, man. Our spirit yearn because we're not at peace. We're not at peace. Every day I get up, every day I get up, my body aches. And the minute I put on my clothes and I leave my little room, I am at war. Because I got to watch everyone. How am I going to be at peace when I got to watch my own people? When I got to watch out for cars coming, I got to watch out for cops. I got to watch out for gunshots. I'm in trouble. I didn't even get to where I'm going. I got to look left. I got to look how, how, How's that peace? Look at what he says. Man that is born of woman is a few days and a full of trouble. Look what's going on in Mexico. Do you really watch what's going on in Mexico? Bang. The truth of U.S. domination of Mexico. Wait till I do a class on this and you will see the madness. Wait. It gets deeper. The Mayan struggle. Do you know this hell in this book that I have? I'm going to go into it. These are separate classes of what trouble that they're in. And they try to make as much as they can. You see the hell. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a picture. I'll give you a picture of the hell that they in. And this is all about the Europeans. Okay? What they have done to them. These are our people. First again, for a lot of you cats that don't understand, these are descendants of the 12 tribes, man. For a lot of you that don't understand the history of what is going down. Okay? Let's look at our people, man. A lot of stuff that they have incorporated, and they're brown. They're not the indigenous, they're not the Caucasian conquistador that you see, okay? That call themselves Mexican. Look how short they are, okay? Look, look how brown and look how gorgeous this young, young child looks, man. These are the indigenous people of that land. Brown pink skinned people. That's why they hate it. But wait a minute. Hold on. Wow, check this out. You wondering about a job. Wait till I show you this picture. A villager makes adobe bricks in the hot sun in the mountains above Hutanango. His family earns $4 for a hundred blocks. What? Let me show you what is talking about? Bang. And you got a job paying you $15 an hour and you beefing in air conditioning, you beefing and you crying about your little job. And look at this man toiling. 
these are the curses the Lord put on us that our slave master would do this to us. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and is full of trouble. He cometh forth from like a flower and is cut down. Why you die? Some people don't even make it. In Chicago, they, they, the young kids out there ain't making it past 15, 16, 17, 18. In Brooklyn, they dying of K2, all that. I remember back in the 80s, they was dying of crack, shooting each other, killing each other. I thank the Lord that I was able to make it out of that. And thus, he said, he fleed as a shadow and continue it not. And does not open thine eyes as such an one and bring me into judgment with thee? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? America is unclean. You can't make this country clean. You can't become president of this stinking country and make it clean. You can't fix it. That's why he said, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Wait. Seeing that your days are numbered, are determined. See, man's days is what? Determined. If you're going to die, the number of his months are with the Lord, and that was appointed him bounds, boundaries, he cannot pass. So if his time is two, you're dying at two. If your time is 10, you're dying at 10. If your time, if your time is 50, you're dying at 50. See, his days is what? Time. That's the number of years you got. Seeing that your days are determined, he already got you set. He already know exactly what you're going to be. Determined. The nature of man. Now, this is a very deep class. There's three more pages, but this is short. So, this is part one on the nature of man. In a little while, I'm going to do another topic. So, hopefully, you'll get through that. Um, boom. Let me get... So, we went nine and three in... Ecclesiastes, I got a couple more I could drop on you about the nature of man. Now, the nature of man is very deep and very vast. The nature of man is the inner court. See, in the Bible, let me show you something, right, before I close out. When you're truly studying the Bible, you must have topics. Then you're not studying the Bible. Then you're not studying the Bible. You're just wasting your time. And I'm not saying that to be, I'm saying that, that you must study and you must look at the many different. These are just some of my topics. See that? These are just some of my topics. Some. Okay. Look at topics. These are all topics. All these are topics. For you to understand the Bible and the complexity of that book, you must know topics. You must study history. Look. This is Rome. For you to understand America, you must know Rome. You must know the history. America is Rome. It's the daughter of Rome. Topics. Look, topics. Topics. I got topics upon topics. And this is just some of my books. The nature of man. If you're not willing to study then how are you going to know? Boom. Let me give you the last one. Ecclesiastes now. Ecclesiastes 9. The, the nature of man. Ecclesiastes 9. Let's go on Ecclesiastes 9. Who? Ecclesiastes 9 verse 1. I'm going to start at 17. 8 verse 17. Then I beheld all the works of the Lord, that a man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. So what does man try to do? Man, I need to know this. I need to know that. You know, you hear all kind of people trying to be wise and all these, all these uh, Muslims and Farrakhan and this group and that group. But wait, the Lord just cursed you and said, you're stupid. He said, I beheld all the works of, of the Lord, that a man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. Because though a man labor to seek it out, yet he shall not find it. So he put you in a, 
in, in, a, in a bubble like, man, I need to know, I need to know. But he says, you could try all you want because you're not God. Yet he shall not find it. Yea, further through a wise man's thing to know it, yet shall he not be able to find it out. For nine verse, for all this I consider in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of the Lord. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is done before them. See that? You ain't that smart, dude. You ain't that smart. That's what I mean. Once I began to read these scriptures, I just backed up like, okay, fine, not a problem. And what am I going to bust my head for? See, that's humility. Understand your position and play your position. There's cats out there now that's trying to teach like they're the grand pool bars. They know everything. Second verse. All things come alike to all. And there's one event. There's one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean and to the unclean, to him that sacrifices and him that sacrifices not. As is to the good, so is to the sinner. And he that sweareth as to him that feared an oath. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yea, also, that the hearts of the Son of Men is full of evil. Bang. So how you gonna tell me about you righteous? You study you righteous. I look at my heart every day and I see the evil that's inside of it. Only thing that holds me is the scriptures. A lot of cats, oh, I'm this, I'm that. Man, you just as wicked as everybody else. Why? Because the Bible is the word of truth. I am evil. I'm not a problem. Now I just, hold on, hold on. What did he say? He said, yea, also the hearts of the son of men is full of evil, and madness is in your heart. Read it for yourself, your nature. Ecclesiastes in the Bible, the ninth chapter and the third verse. Read it for yourself. And madness is in their hearts. Why do you think you see people doing all kind of mad crap? Taking guns and shooting up whole sets of people. Why? Nobody don't tell them that. Madness is in them. You got to be mad. Madness for no reason. No reason. You're mad. While they live, and after that, they go to the dead. Everybody dies. So you did that and you're going to die. Nature, what is in you? This is just, I'm, this is a basic of studying the inner court, which Christ said, now he's the truth, follow him. If you follow the gospel, it'll help you to moderate yourself. Let me leave you to the last verse, Isaiah. What is the purpose as to why I read this book? Isaiah. 40, Isaiah 34, 16. What's the purpose why I read this book? This book has helped me so much. Isaiah 33, verse 6. I'm going to show you how this book has helped me so much. You know, those that know me from back in the days, I was out there wilding out like every young black man. And then the Lord said, stop. And he brought me to the truth. And it showed me a lot of things. And it helped me. Because I was on one way path downhill to hell. I was getting arrested a lot. I don't care. Let you know. I'd spaz out on them with a quickness. I was getting arrested a lot. Until finally one day I was in prison again in Manhattan. And I was like, yo, why am I here, man? See, madness. Why am I here? Madness. And he's like, yeah, well, when are you going to wake up? Bang. So what the book has done for me, closing out, Isaiah 33, verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability. See, stabilize you. Stabilize you. Of thy times. <laughs> wisdom and knowledge of what? <laughs> of everything. That's what this book has done for me. This book is the comforter. 
There is no man out there that can teach you past, present, and future like this book. Every group is using this book. Every group. Whether they agree with it or don't agree with it, they're going into it. Philosophers is going into it. Joyce Meyer is going into it. Creflo Dollar, uh, all these dogs stealing and robbing the Lord's word is going into it. To what? Stability. So with that, this, uh, you know, um, check it out. You know, I teach every Sunday now. Lord bless, thank a um, wonderful young lady of mine. Every, every Sunday, uh, Grand Army Plaza Library, room 7, 130. And uh, if you want to come through and study and ask questions, come through. Okay, Grand Army Plaza Library in Brooklyn. Um, you know, right off uh, Flatbush and Eastern Parkway, room 7. I mean, every Sunday, Lord bless us, I got the spring, 1.30. And if you like the video, you give me a like. You know, I'm not into this like stuff, but I'm seeing how other people use that. Um, you know, and write, you know, if you like other things you'd like me to cover, you know, I'll cover it for you. With that, I say peace, and um, I'm going to get ready to do another video in like 15, 20 minutes as I load this one up. Another topic, um, I'm going to do the kingdom of heaven. Peace, my king. I see you out there, man. I'm coming back on in like 15 minutes. I got to load this up.